Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Thanks for having me on. What's going on with U.S. Treasuries? Uh, well, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield hit a 14-month high on Tuesday. Uh, climbed to 1.77 percent. Now, yields go up as prices go lower, and so treasuries are selling off. And um, you know, uh, that has to be because people anticipate that the U.S. government is going to have to issue a lot more debt. Why? Because we have a 3.9 trillion dollar economic stimulus package coming. In fact, President Joe Biden is going to speak in Pittsburgh about that stimulus package on Wednesday. And so maybe we're seeing Treasury sell off in anticipation of news like we're really going to fund this thing to the wall. You know, maybe that's it. However, how it um, affects things that your, I should say, more of your listeners may care about is that as Treasuries go higher, gold tends to go lower. That's because the argument against gold is it has no yield. And for a long time, we could say, well, hey, treasuries don't have any yield either. But as their yield goes higher, they that, that starts to eat away at that argument. And so that's probably why we're seeing gold go down to, you know, a three-week low. But the important thing for gold is it's um, it is testing the low that it saw in uh, early March. And that's a low that's like a year old. Like, you have to go back a year to find that kind of low again, where it constantly tested that that low before heading higher. In uh, June was the last time, June of last year, it actually tested that low, and it hit there one, two, three, four, five times in three months. And so then, after that June test, gold just took off. We saw that ramp up into, um, into August of last year. I don't know if uh, your listeners remember that was quite extraordinary so are we seeing the same thing here i don't know um uh one more interesting thing about treasuries just to speak about that the last time we saw treasuries sell off like this was just after donald trump won the presidential election (laughs) yields rose rose 84 basis points then so when donald trump won the election the treasury uh yields go higher and and treasuries themselves fell off. Joe Biden has won an election. Yields go higher and treasuries sell off. I don't know what the connection is there, but you have to admit there is some kind of weird similarity, too. How can the U.S. government afford almost $4 trillion in infrastructure out the door almost instantly? Well, um, they have the printing presses. They can afford whatever they want. The question is, what value will the U.S. dollar hold after they do this, right? Mm. And so that's the real thing. Um, they are talking about how to pay for it. It's mainly um, things like um, raising taxes. There were a bunch of big tax cuts from Trump, mainly went to corporations and the very rich. So I don't think anyone will complain too much if, uh, if uh, those go away. So they'll at least put those back. But then what kind of special taxes might they put? They might put taxes on people who made a lot of money um, during the pandemic. Jeff Bezos made an insane amount of money during the pandemic. If they can find a special tax for him, I don't think he'd get a lot of sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he could have become the world's uh, richest man, I think, from the gains he made in the past year alone. Yeah, right. And in the meantime... Or one of the richest. <laughs> they're, they're squeezing the Amazon workers like like it's some kind of Dickensian story. It's it's insane. So uh, you know, I mean, I they, they they'll certainly roll back the Trump tax cuts, 
uh, which include inheritance taxes on uh, inheritance is what is it over one million or three million? I can't remember which. And uh, then they might do special taxes. Oh, uh, they might have a transaction tax on um, on like stock trading. That would affect me. I wouldn't like that, but it could happen, you know. And uh, we'll see what happens. Really, the next big thing is Biden's speech on Wednesday. And so once he does that, then they can say, okay, this is the plan. How do we pay for it? And we'll have to see what they come up with to do that. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, what's going on in the cannabis space? Oh, it's horrible. (laughs) (laughs) And I say this as a cannabis investor. Oh, I thought we'd hit the bottom last week. Apparently not. Um, Really hard to say. Uh, Now, one thing is we are seeing what I call the churn in markets. That is, uh, stocks appear to break out, and then they don't follow through. Stocks appear to break down, and they don't follow through. There's this churn, and money is flowing around, looking for a home, looking for some place to invest, which is weird considering this big spending outlook. You would think everyone would would be buying um, industrial and, um, and, uh, and also industrial metal stocks like i'm doing with my subscribers but um so money seems to be churning out of cannabis stocks right now it'll come back i mean the growth potential is extraordinary we uh just heard that uh new york state's probably going to pass legalization bill this week or maybe next week that won't take effect till 2022 but that's not that far away and uh, that's just to give you know the actual institutions that have to handle legalized cannabis, all the taxing and like all the distribution and all that stuff, give them time to actually get things in place. So, you know, I mean, uh, there's, there's really a tough time in cannabis right now, but the future looks bright. So I think this is a buying opportunity. Um, I'm not especially worried about it, but it, 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 it does hurt. And anyone who is holding or is long cannabis stocks, as I am, you have my complete sympathy. Well, it certainly looks like uh, President Biden himself isn't pro-pot, suspending White House members who have admitted to pass pot use. Do you think he's going to decriminalize it? Because Kamala Harris, the vice president, seems to be leaning strongly in that direction. Yeah, she has a lot to make up for. After all, she was a prosecutor. Um I don't think he can hold back the tide. He obviously isn't going to be pressing forward with it, but he'll be dragged kicking and screaming in, into the present. That's the way I look at it. You know, I mean, uh, he might not want to do these things, but also his attorney general is very pro-pot, which is really where a lot of this stuff will be made. So, um, yeah, he, he isn't as big a supporter as some people might have thought, but he never was. You know, he's always been anti-pot. Um, I don't know if he had an experience in his family or something, or had a, smoked a bad joint in college. I have no idea. So um, he will not press things ahead, but I don't expect him to hold things up very much. The, the real blockage has always been the Senate. And so far as I know, you know, there's still enough senators to be against it that what they might get done this session would be um, banking uh changes changes to the banking law so that banks can work with cannabis companies that might actually happen full legalization that might not happen till uh next year you know or else the year after it'll come slowly but as they often say uh we make progress one one funeral at a time and of course too when you were talking about possible new taxes or higher taxes from biden well it gives them a whole new product to tax well, you would think that. <laughs> I mean, uh, that would be the obvious thing to me. They need tax money desperately. 
And, uh, you know, just do a small, don't make the mistake California did. You know, I hate it when bureaucrats look at cannabis and say, oh, we're going to make all this money on it. But you do, the criminals love it when they do that. You know, that makes the days of the criminals when government gets all greedy and so the price goes up because people have to pay these taxes, people will continue to buy from the illegal marijuana suppliers. So keep the taxes low enough that people don't mind paying it and uh, in the long run you'll make a lot more money. Well, the last time they released statistics in Canada, the province that was the most against marijuana, Alberta, which you could look at as Canada's Texas, has yeah. the most marijuana shops and makes the most amount of money from it. And British Columbia, famous for decades for BC Bud, made the least amount of marijuana except Prince Edward Island, which is a little bit bigger than New York Central Park. Well, so that it shows problem, you there's a right way to roll it out in a wrong way. Right. Well, the big problem in Canada, or at least parts of Canada, is they couldn't get the bureaucracy to actually give out licenses to open up pot shops. Isn't that right? Yeah. I mean, places that are already used to dealing with a regulated product like liquor stores in British Columbia are not allowed to sell marijuana. Yeah, right. So what this is, is once again, the, the government is out of step with the people. The people want it, and the government is having uh, uh, some kind of spastic fit about it. I don't know why. And... uh so, once again, they get out of step with the, with the public. We have the same thing here in the U.S. about a whole range of issues. The um, U.S. Senate is so out of sync with U.S. people on so many issues, it's not funny. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, I guess get out there and vote. <laughs> and I, I understand people who are turned off by politics and say, my vote doesn't matter, and you're kind of right uh, in that one vote doesn't matter. But if you can get people organized and get some petitions going and show politicians you mean, you, you mean business, then it can actually get things done. Well, uh, in Canada in 1975, the Dane Commission recommended that they legalize marijuana. And, of course, I think it happened in 2018. So, you know, it did take a while. <laughs> Right on schedule for a government organization, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the, the speed of a uh, of a charging glacier. We'll have more yeah. with Sean Broderick right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. That giant container ship, perhaps one of the biggest in the world, the ever given, finally freed from the Suez Canal after nearly a week. And people are saying the problem is over. But I, I think what we have to look at is how sensitive or delicate the supply chain is around the planet. They're telling me right now I my car that I ordered might not show up for nine months because it's missing one computer chip that's stuck on one of those ships behind the Ever Given or it could be on the Ever Given. Uh, cocoa prices are going to go up. Coffee prices are going to go up. We won't, quote, run out. But you'll definitely have sticker shock. How does that affect people looking at investment? And do you have to take a look at shock waves around the planet just from one little incident when you're planning to invest? Well, there is that, and I guess people can keep it in mind. I bet this fades from memory pretty quickly. And yes, they are saying that, um, you know, things are stuck for like seven days, but, if, but because of the slowdowns that, uh, that, that, that are then triggered by it because now there's a whole bunch of ships that did not go through so now they all have to wait to go through this could add extra weeks to the global supply chain for things that go through the Suez Canal it's nuts you know I think people will 
forget this because it won't be in the news. We'll have fresh disasters on, like something else. What really worries me is uh, some terrorist organization around the world, you know, and it could be anywhere. I'm not looking at anybody in particular. But let's say someone with a grudge against global trade, for example, or who thinks uh, they can hurt their enemies through attacking global trade, does something terrible in the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal and some other important waterways at the same time. You know, they could do it, asymmetrical warfare. When we see how how really vulnerable the global supply chain is, to, you know, this disruption didn't happen on purpose. What if someone did something on purpose and made it really bad? Then you have to wonder how that would go. And uh, so, as you said, it just raises up, you know, how the weakest link can really um, slow you down for a whole bunch of reasons. And so I just worry about the next time. That's, that's all I'm worried about. Sean, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks. It's always fun. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. If you have any questions for Sean or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.